and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about shooting Polaroids on the Mamiya RZ67 and that is with the use of the Resovot Instant Lab back. So let me show you how it works and we'll get into a bit more detail about this. Now this is a back which shoots on the Polaroid integral film. So it will shoot on 600 film, I-type film, SX70 film, depending on what ISO you want. So the 600 film is rated at 640 ISO, which is identical to the I-type, and the SX70 film is rated at 160 ISO. So depending on what conditions are, you can choose between the films. I've only been shooting with the I-type, and that's purely because it's winter here, and it's very shit and awful weather. So I've only been shooting with the I-Type film, but I've been changing between black and white and colour. And then I've had some special edition ones which I've been using. But this is the back, so this was my impossible, you can see it there, this was my impossible instant lab. And essentially this bit here and this bit here are the lab and then this is the same, you got the circuitry from the original lab in here and then this mount is custom made for the RZ. So the nice thing about this is that it does lock on, so it will lock on to the back and shouldn't, shouldn't come off. Um, and you've still got the dark slide from the impossible lab, so you can change backs and shoot proper 120 film or you can just shoot um, Polaroids. The downside of this is that it's very addictive and I cannot stop shooting Polaroids. I've pretty much been shooting Polaroids exclusively since I've got it. And the last video I posted, which was I believe middle towards the end of January, was when I received this and I have not stopped taking Polaroids since then. Now, actually putting it together isn't too hard. I was genuinely surprised at how easy it was. I'm gonna throw up a time-lapse video now, and as you can see, it's really easy just to take off the top. Uh, the bellows mechanism of the Impossible Lab is really easy to remove. It's just four screws in the bottom, and yeah. The main part that I struggled with was removing the circuitry from the Impossible Lab. I don't know if it's glued in there, or if it's just a friction lock, but I couldn't, for some reason, get it out, um, and I struggled with that for a little while, um, just because I didn't want to damage it, really. But when I did get it out, it was very, very easy. Changing the flex cord over so it's a little bit longer. Um, putting the RZ mount on, very, very easy. Really, I think it took about half an hour to do, um, and I think probably I spent about 10 minutes trying to remove the circuitry without damaging it um, which wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad at all but the RZ the impossible lab back now is your ejection button is here on the back and um, instead of on the front where it was before but everything else pretty much the same you're essentially removing the ejection unit of the impossible lab so you've got the ejection unit of the Impossible Lab to process the pictures, but you've got the full control of the RZ to do shutter speed, aperture, all that sort of thing. And it's so fun. Um, having the option to change lenses is amazing. So I've got the 110mm f2.8 and the 65mm f4. Both really, really nice. 110mm gives me a standard sort of 55mm equivalent, and the 65 kind of gives me like a 30 mil, 35-ish mil. The one thing I struggled with a little bit is the way that this mounts onto the back, it mounts only in one direction and it isn't rotatable. So you can't rotate the back. So once it's on, and I found that the lock can be a little bit stiff sometimes, once it's on, you can't rotate it, it's fixed and what this means is that all of your pictures come out basically sideways, which is all right. It means that the bottom of your picture is towards the side of the frame and 
one of the sides is towards the bottom, which isn't too bad. Um, you can just rotate the camera, and if you have the ejection unit pointing up, then you will have basically, yeah, normal pictures, if that makes sense, or up the right way. Yeah, you have to have the camera on multi-exposure, just so it will wind on, otherwise it won't wind on. The camera doesn't realise that there's a back on the camera, because it's, it's just a, essentially it's a dumb back, there's no communication or anything like that. But you get the luxury of all the macro focusing or close focusing with the RZ. Um, ideally, you'd, I'd recommend a prism on here because although everything is flipped left to right in the viewfinder, it's also flipped again if you try and take pictures like this. So you take pictures like this and not only is everything left to right but everything is up to down which is all right but then when you're looking at it sideways and move that way and yeah very confusing wouldn't recommend it would definitely recommend a prism so you can just be like that and don't have to worry about orientation another important thing to know about the reservoir back is that because you expose directly onto the front of the polaroid it means that any words or text in the image are going to be flipped left to right. Obviously you can just flip it back in Photoshop or whatever, and I've done that with a couple of them, but it doesn't really bother me. But if you're aiming to have words look normal um, or readable, so they're not backwards, you will need to flip them in post because there's no way to actually have them come out the right way directly from this, which is all right, but it's something to bear in mind. Um, at the moment, I've got the notes edition in here, and I can quickly show you how everything works. So basically, I'm gonna take a light reading, 40th of a second of four. This is gonna be a crap picture, by the way. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Taking the dark side out already, so that's useful. So let's stand up. So focus and take a picture, which yeah works. And then to process the picture, press the little blue button in there, and it comes out just a normal Polaroid picture, which is cool. It takes about 15 minutes to develop, which isn't too bad. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think a lot of people were excited about this for the creative aspect of it, which it is very fun to do. And it's really nice to have instant pictures just without sort of thinking about it or getting instant pictures where you have a significant depth of field or you can change lenses. And with the Mamiya lenses, the Mamiya lenses are so sharp. I don't think the sharpness of the film can actually register how sharp the lenses are, if that makes sense. They can't resolve how sharp the lenses are. So you're not getting sort of pin sharp images, which is all right. It's kind of what you'd expect from a Polaroid, but it is gonna be sharper than your normal, say, um, one of those, which is the One Step Plus. It's gonna be all right, it's gonna be better than that, which is good, I guess. Obviously, you can also expose for shadows, highlights, or you can expose for middle tones. And personally, I would recommend exposing for the middle tones because this the Polaroid film is a lot like slide film. It's not very good if you over or underexpose. If you underexpose, it's going to miss, basically you're going to be losing detail and if you overexpose you're going to be losing detail a lot. So this picture that I'm showing now is actually a night shot that was taken with a second long exposure and that was done because my a meter reading said um, 0.4 of a second and I decided that I could probably add a little bit more and it wouldn't be a problem but as you can see, took a picture and the sky is completely blown out. So don't overexpose or just be as close to your metered exposure as possible 
which is fine most of the time. Um, as long as it's not faster than 400th of a second with the RZ, you'll be fine. Just be aware they do do one for the RB. So if you wanted to shoot Polaroids and you've got an RB, you can do it if you have the Impossible Lab. Now, the Impossible Lab, price of that second hand has gone up a bit. I got mine for, I think, 40, 50 pounds, but generally they're going for about up to, say, 100 pounds depending on condition, which isn't too bad, but bear that in mind that you have to buy the Impossible Lab separately before getting the Reservoir back. So the Reservoir back doesn't come with the Impossible Lab, and that's something important to remember, just because they do say on the website, but I know that they're advertising it and they're showing it with the back and everything, so just be aware of that. It's also probably worth noting that you can't necessarily, well, you will be able to test shoot um, with this back it will give you an idea of where the lights falling and things like that but because the ISO of the eye type and the 600 film is 640 unless you're metering for 640 you're gonna have to make adjustments and things like that with the SX70 film because it's 160 ISO that could be much more relatable getting an idea of correct exposure with the reservoir back but I wouldn't recommend it just because I took that picture of the camera what, five minutes ago and it's still developing. So they take a few minutes to develop. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to fully develop. And even then it's a little bit iffy as to what's actually correctly exposed. But it's, yeah, it's more of a thing for fun than it is for uh, serious taking, seriously taking pictures. Um, but that being said, I haven't taken any one pictures on 120 film since getting this back and that's mainly just because it's so fun it's really fun to be able to take a single picture and not have to worry that i'm gonna have to get it processed and things like that yes the polaroid originals film is expensive but if you're using this back you can use the eye type film which is generally a few pounds cheaper than the 600 or the sx70 purely because you don't have a battery in the pack. So it's just the film. The film is identical to the 600 film, but you don't have the battery. And the battery is what adds, increases the price in most of them. So bear that in mind. And yeah, if you do want to get an instant back, uh, Reservoir make them for the RB67, the RZ67 obviously, and I believe the Mamiya Universal, which pretty good camera. And I think with that, it fills the frame. What you've also probably noticed is that with the RZ, you're getting this little black border around there, which I don't mind, but I can understand if some people wouldn't like that. Depending on, sometimes the back won't necessarily lock shut properly. If it isn't completely locked shut, then sometimes the frame might shift a little bit, or the frame might be slightly wonky, but it's not too much of a problem. It's one of those things that you're gonna have to experiment with, you're gonna have to get used to, but it's fun, and that's kind of what's what I like about it is that I can just take it out, take pictures. I only get eight pictures on a roll on a pack of film, and it's fun, and I like it. I'm going to show some pictures up now. Uh, all the colour pictures were mostly eye type. There's a couple of special edition ones. I think there's a camo one, and a, I think it's called Note This. And then the black and white ones I actually took with an orange filter because I know that when I've shot black and white film in the past. The Polar Originals film is it's good, it's black and white film's good, but it's very, very grey. Like, I, it's, yeah, it's boring, there's not much contrast to it. So adding that orange filter just boosts the contrast a bit, makes the blacks a little bit blacker, and makes the whites a little bit whiter, which I like and I think work quite well. But yeah, I'm going to post some pictures, show the pictures up now, hope you enjoy, and I'll be back in a second.
So those are my pictures so far with the Reservoir Instant back on the Mamiya RZ. For anyone interested, I'll leave the link to the Reservoir site in the description below. If you'd like to go check them out, I'd highly recommend it. Um, just have a look, see what they do, what backs they make for different cameras. And if you've got an RB or an RZ and you want to shoot Polaroids with it, this is kind of the best option because although you can still get the backs for the Fujifilm FP100C, the film is significantly more expensive. People think the Polaroid Originals film is expensive. The FP100C is 40, 50 pounds for a pack of 10 at the moment. Um, and I think that's just set to rise. So if you do want to shoot Polaroids, even if it's just for fun, I'd highly recommend it. I've had a lot of fun with it and yeah, that's kind of everything I had to say. So thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe and leave a comment if you want. I've posted some pictures on my Instagram, so check that out. That'll be in the description as well. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.